The trio toured with Bon Jovi and 93 and named Guns N' Roses as a formative influence. As can be seen in the opening bars of Gold Against the Soul. The first song Sleep Flower. It is one of the most famous riffs of the exemplary canon of mania and a prime example of the virtuoso guitar art of James Dean Bradfield, channeling the spirit of Slash and James Hetfield. Gold on Soul may not be perfect and defines the band in the same way as the Holy Bible in Everything Must Go, but it has stood the test of time. And this luxurious re-release invites listeners to review a great jewel lost in the exquisite manic Street Preacher's back catalog. Though often forgotten, the single life becoming a landslide is probably the most poignant of the four-minute album, in which Bradfield unfortunately declares I don't want to be a man. In his despair, both reached impressive positions in the charts, as did Roses in the Hospital, a song called Rudy Can't Fail by The Clash on an AOR basis. In hindsight we can say that the B-side Patrick Bateman in his 1992 version of the MASH song, Suicide is Painless would have slightly improved the quality barometer, yourself and junkie show Edward's personal side, which might not apply to the generation of terrorists. Ask any fan of Manic Street features the name of his favorite album. And Gold Against the Soul is probably not his answer. Originally released in the summer of 1993, Gold Against the Soul arrived in the midst of a musical landscape that evolved from dance-inspired indie to the heavier sounds of grunge and the nostalgic bells of Rick The album not only highlights the lyrical skills of Richie Edwards and co-conspirator Nicky Wire, but also shows the incredible singles band that were in Stiller Manics. To this day, the album is a trademark of their time, and 27 years later it still doesn't seem outdated. The most praiseworthy feature of the deluxe edition is the 120-page book with handwritten lyrics and unpublished photos by Mitch Akita. However, it is one of those records that occupies a special place in the hearts of many loved ones. Although it has never received the praise of its predecessor or successor, while many of his contemporaries were already waiting for the next train to get crash, the maniacs were satisfied with their classic rock sound. This was the first time they hired producer Dave Ringa, whom they still use for the next quarter century, just like Generation Terrorists. This song has its weaknesses, but it's a natural progression since the band's early days.